Hi, my name is Ravi Shankar Pegada. In this video, I am going to demonstrate on how to enable and utilize user ID on Cloud NGFW for Azure. Here is the detailed agenda for this demonstration. I am going to use PanOS integrated user ID agent and server monitoring with WinRM over HTTPS. In order to save time, I have taken care of configuring service account, server monitoring, and adding test users to my domain controller as a prerequisite. Let's go ahead and see that on my domain controller. Here is my Active Directory domain controller where you can see that I have two test users added over here, test user one and test user two. And also the WinRM transport protocol is being configured as HTTPS. Before going into the details of the configurations, let's try to understand the lab topology that is being utilized. As you can see over here, I have my customer subscription where we have a spoke VNet that is connected to the Azure VBAN hub into which Cloud NGFW is being integrated. And this Cloud NGFW is managed by Palo Alto Panorama. Within my spoke VNet, I have two test users which is going to be utilized in order to simulate the traffic. And these two test users, test user one and test user two, or added to my Active Directory domain. And here is the Windows Server which is acting as a Active Directory domain controller that we have seen just now. Let's now go ahead and take care of step-by-step -step configurations. Let's go ahead and configure server monitoring account on Panorama. Go to your user identification, user mapping and click on the gear icon in order to go ahead and add your server monitoring account. Here, as you can see here, I have already configured the server monitoring account and this is the service account that is being configured on your Active Directory domain controller. After configuring server monitoring, we will now go ahead and configure server monitoring with WinRM over HTTPS. So within the same page, you can go ahead and add server monitoring by clicking on this add option. As you can see here, I have already configured. So if you click on this, you'll be able to configure the server monitoring with the transport protocol as WinRM over HTTPS. And this network address is the IP address of the Active Directory domain controller. Import the root certificate that's downloaded from the Windows server onto Panorama and create a certificate profile. Within the certificate management section, you can go ahead to certificates and import the root certificate. Uh, it's already imported over here. And after that, use this imported root certificate in order to create the certificate profile. Here is the root certificate that is being utilized within this certificate profile. Let's now add this certificate profile to user ID connection security. After configuring this certificate profile, uh, go to this user identification and connection security. Within this connection security, click on this gear icon in order to add the certificate profile that we have created in previous step. After adding this connection security, please go ahead and commit and push the configuration. With this, uh, we are done with the basic required configurations on the Windows Server and Panorama in order to establish the connectivity. Now let's go ahead and see how to enable user ID on Cloud NGFW. User ID in general will be enabled within a particular zone that is being configured. But when it comes to Cloud NGFW, the networking configurations are not available for the end user to be editable. Now to enable user ID on Cloud NGFW, you need to click on this private and public zones, the only zones that's available on Cloud NGFW. You need to override this zone configuration and after overriding this, you will be getting an option to enable user ID. So you can go to this private and public zone and click on this enable user ID. By default, it is disabled. So do the same for the public zone as well. So this is the option or the mechanism in which you'll be able to enable user ID on Cloud NGFW. After enabling user ID, we now need to establish connectivity from the Cloud NGFW towards the Active Directory LDAP server. Since Cloud NGFW is a managed service, you'll not be able to have access to the management of the backend resources. So for that, you will be exposed with a loopback interface 
that will be used as a source in order to initiate the connectivity from cloud and gfw to the active directory ldap server now in order to connect or establish connectivity we are going to configure service route let's see how it is going to be configured go to your device setup configuration and come to this services tab within this you will get to see this service route configuration option click on this so you need to use this customize option in order to configure the service route and within this ipv4 tab click on this ldap and configure the source interface as loopback so you will by default it will be using use default so update that with loopback 3 which is the interface that will be utilized internally by cloud and gfw to initiate the communication and the source ip address will be by default populated once you select this loopback 3 interface after configuring this now go ahead and configure the service route based on the destination and this destination is the ip address of your active directory server and over here as well use the source inter interface as the loopback 3 interface so that's about the service route configuration using which we are going to communicate from cloud and gfw to the active directory ldap server after configuring this please go ahead and commit and push the configuration you will now be able to define security policies on cloud and gfw using the usernames that are defined within the active directory let's now uh, try to go ahead and configure user to group mapping by adding ldap server profile on panorama so within the server profiles come to this ldap and here you'll be able to go ahead and click on add to add this ldap server profile the one that is already added let's see what's being configured over there so within this you need to provide the server list with it, which is the active directory ldap server in my case which is the windows server which is acting as the active directory that is configured over here as part of this server settings right you need to select the type as active directory and the bind dn and the base dn this information you will be able to get that from your active directory so let's see where you will be able to get this bind dn details once you go to your active directory and use the username this is the username of uh, this particular active directory windows server and Within the properties, you'll be able to get this distinguished name and go ahead and click on this and copy this value and use this while configuring this LDAP server profile and provide that as an input within this bind DN and provide your login credentials and click on OK. Use this LDAP server profile within your user identification and group mapping settings. Let's now go ahead and configure user ID master device within the device group. So this is my device group that is used for the cloud NGFW and come over here and select the backend resources that's up and running and enable this user ID master device and select one of the instance out of all the backend instances that is running. Commit and push the configuration from Panorama. You will now be able to define security policies based on the usernames. As part of testing, now I have two users, right? Test user one and test user two. In order to test this, I have defined two security policies, one to allow all traffic. The other one is block linking for the test user two. As you can see here, if I go to this policy, I have used the source user as the test user two, which is part of the PanLab domain. So when you try to add this, source users you'll be able to get all the users and the groups that is part of your active directory domain that's integrated with this cloud and gfw let's now log into test user one host machine this is my test user one as you can see here this is the test user one and it's part of the panlab dot local domain let's now try to access some of the websites let us say linkedin and let me also try to log into twitter and we should see that this application should be reported on panorama based on the username i'm able to log into twitter and also link them so as you can see here both the websites are accessible for test user one let's see how it is being reported on panorama so here we are on panorama let's click on monitoring and see the traffic logs 
for this particular cloud ngfw device group so let me try to refresh this and let me try to filter based on the source ip address of this test user one and so that will get the appropriate results as you can see we are able to report based on the username the source user is test user one and this user is able to access twitter and linkedin so and the applications are reported appropriately and it is hitting the rule allow all and here is the application linkedin and based on the policies it is hitting allow all policy because it allows all the traffic and the first rule is to block test user 2 from accessing linkedin so now let's try to log into test user 2 and see how the behavior is going to be let's now log into test user 2 so here is my test user 2 windows client machine where you can see the username is test user 2 and it's part of panlab.local domain let's try to access linkedin which is actually blocked and see what's going to happen so for this test user as per the policy test user 2 is blocked from accessing linkedin and let's try to access some other websites say again for example twitter we can see that test user 2 is able to access twitter but he's not able to access linkedin let's try to go ahead and see what's happening on this by logging into panorama so if you come to panorama go to your monitoring and try to remove this filter and we should see that test user 2 and let's try to use test user 2 ip address so this shows that both test user 2 and test user 1 were reported appropriately within this panorama and you can see that test user 2 is blocked from accessing linkedin you can see the application is linkedin and it's hitting the rule block linkedin where we have defined the policy based on the user and the test user 2 is able to access twitter right let's see where it is being reported so yeah you can see that the test user 2 is able to access twitter and it's hitting the rule hello all so that shows cloud ngfw is able to help you define policies based on the usernames and also monitor the traffic based on the users thank you